Paul Bloom, Against Empathy, The Case for Rational Compassion. Dive into the enlightening world of Against Empathy, The Case for Rational Compassion, where author Paul Bloom challenges traditional notions about the importance of empathy. By exploring the different types of empathy, emotional and cognitive, Bloom discusses the impact of empathy on decision-making processes and its relationship with kindness, morality, and logic. The book offers a fresh perspective on empathy, recognizing its potential shortcomings and biases, and discusses the need for rational compassion to make better, well-rounded decisions. Discover a captivating narrative that questions the nature of empathy and its impact on our society. Understanding Empathy's Two Forms Empathy is a crucial emotional ability that allows us to understand and share the feelings of others. It can be divided into two types, emotional empathy and cognitive empathy. Emotional empathy allows us to genuinely feel the emotions of others, while cognitive empathy involves understanding someone's emotional state without feeling it ourselves. Both types of empathy are useful in different situations, yet they can also be misused or manipulated. Empathy, the capacity to understand and share the feelings of others, is an essential human quality. It connects and strengthens our relationships with those around us. However, did you know that there are actually two distinct forms of empathy? When hearing about tragic events, such as the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre in 2012, people often experience emotional empathy. For example, the author's wife felt compelled to check on their own children at school, and a woman at a cafe was seen weeping, even though neither personally knew any of the victims. Similarly, when President Obama addressed the nation after the tragedy, he was also moved to tears. Emotional empathy enables us to genuinely feel the emotions of those who are suffering. On the other hand, Cognitive empathy involves understanding a person's emotional state without experiencing it ourselves. Although this form of empathy can have positive uses, such as conflict resolution and problem solving, it can also be manipulated. Con artists and bullies, for example, use cognitive empathy to identify their victims' weaknesses and exploit them for personal gain. In these cases, they understand the victim's pain but do not genuinely feel it themselves. Interestingly, emotional empathy can manifest physically as well. One might feel pain in the same location as someone who has suffered an injury or, like the writer John Updike, experience a tightening in the throat when witnessing a loved one's discomfort. Ultimately, both emotional and cognitive empathy are vital components of our emotional intelligence, enabling us to navigate relationships and social situations effectively. However, it's important to be aware of the distinction between the two and recognize when empathy might be misused or manipulated. Balancing Empathy in Conflict Empathy has gained significant attention in recent years, with numerous books, editorials, conferences, and online resources exploring its potential. It is often viewed as a panacea for personal, work, and global challenges. However, it's crucial to have balanced empathy considering both sides in a conflict to find a solution that benefits all. Personal experience can be a significant influence on developing empathy, but it's also important to actively encourage empathy in others, such as posing questions that help them understand how others might feel in a particular situation. Empathy has taken center stage, and it's hard to miss the exploding popularity of this aspect of psychology. From bookshops to YouTube channels and blogs, empathy has been called upon to solve a vast array of issues, from everyday life challenges to the complex world of parenting. The author spent time observing conferences and online communities where empathy is embraced as a means to improve not just personal relationships but also touted as a potential cure for broader societal problems. For instance, during 2014, Tensions were high in the United States after repeated instances of young black citizens being killed by the police. Unexpectedly, empathy became a focal point as people offered contrasting viewpoints, some believing that police lacked empathy for the black community, while others felt that protesters failed to understand the tremendous stress police officers face daily. This example demonstrates the ease with which empathy can become one-sided and warped, 
ultimately exacerbating a conflict. To truly progress and find effective solutions, empathy must be extended to all parties involved in a situation. Recognizing the power of empathy when applied judiciously, the question arises, how can we cultivate it? One potent source of empathy is personal experience, as displayed by parents of children with special needs who often exhibit heightened sensitivity and compassion towards others in similar situations. In addition to drawing on personal experiences, it's essential to actively foster empathy in those we engage with daily. Parents can do this by posing thought-provoking questions to their children, such as, how would you feel if someone treated you that way? By doing so, we can help create a more empathetic world, ready to acknowledge and understand diverse perspectives. Mirroring Emotions in the Brain Our brains possess a unique ability to mirror the feelings and actions of others. This neurological connection is due to mirror neurons, which researchers believe evolved to help us rapidly learn skills from others. Empathy runs deep among humans, even when we merely read about someone's pain or look at someone in anguish, our brain activity reflects the same response as if we were experiencing that emotion. Disgust, for instance, can prime our emotions just by watching others react to repulsive content. This innate mirroring mechanism aids our understanding, empathy, and connection to others as we navigate through life. Beyond empathy, kindness is roots. While empathy is often a motivating factor for acts of kindness, there are other important reasons people choose to help others. Some individuals base their actions on moral responsibility, believing that they should do good simply because it is the right thing to do. Others, like philanthropist Zell Kravinsky, use logic to guide their actions, donating millions of dollars and even a kidney because the decision made rational sense. Additionally, Spiritual faith and religious upbringing play a significant role in some people's decisions to practice forgiveness and help others, exemplified by Jason Baldwin's ability to forgive those who wrongfully imprisoned him. Ultimately, kindness transcends empathy, encompassing morality, logic, and faith as driving forces. Empathy's Selective Nature It's easy to feel empathy for those who are similar to us or live close by, but empathy often fails to extend beyond our geographical and cultural boundaries. This limited perspective can lead to favoring specific individuals or groups at the expense of others. Empathy's selective nature can ultimately result in dangerous consequences when crucial decisions are based solely on this emotional response. Annie Dillard, an American author, once challenged the notion of empathy by asking how empathetic we truly are towards the billions of people living in China. Indeed, it's natural for people to empathize more readily with their neighbors and those who share similar backgrounds. A prime example of this principle is the public's reaction to the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. The tragedy struck a chord with anyone who had ever been a parent or a child, eliciting an outpouring of sympathy and support. However, countless other mass shootings and murders occur every year, often without the same level of emotional response, revealing how selective our empathy can be. This selectivity is even more apparent when comparing the fates of those affected by tragedies in different countries. While Sandy Hook victims received an overwhelming number of donations, parents in Syria and Sudan who lost their children to violence experienced significantly less support. The danger of empathy lies in its potential to lead us to make decisions that prioritize the needs of a particular minority, ultimately harming the majority. For instance, Rebecca Smith, an eight-year-old girl, nearly died after receiving a contaminated vaccine. Hearing her story would naturally evoke strong empathy and, potentially, a desire to campaign against the vaccine manufacturer. However, that very same vaccine saves countless other children worldwide. Unfortunately, as they remain statistics without individual stories, our empathy often fails to reach them in the same way it would for Rebecca. This kind of emotional imbalance can have grave consequences when it comes to making decisions impacting many lives. Empathy and the Blame Game The human tendency to empathize can be influenced by our perception of the situational factors surrounding someone's suffering, their affiliation to our own group, and the feeling of disgust. This leads to dehumanization and a lack of understanding or sympathy for certain individuals. 
Schadenfreude is a common emotion that arises from a lack of empathy towards others. It is often brought on when we believe someone has caused their own misfortune. For instance, neuroscientist Jean Desity's study, The Blame Game, showed that most participants felt significantly less empathy for AIDS patients who had contracted the virus through drug use, as opposed to innocent blood transfusions. Our sense of empathy varies depending on whether we perceive someone as part of our own group or an outsider. Grit Hines' research with male soccer fans revealed the participants' empathic neural responses were stronger when observing a fellow supporter receiving a shock, while the reaction was much weaker when witnessing a rival fan in pain. Another factor that affects empathy is the presence of disgust. Psychologists Lausanna Harris and Susan Fisk discovered that this emotion can extend to marginalized individuals like drug addicts and homeless people. Their study found that when participants viewed photographs of these individuals, the majority exhibited disgust and a lack of empathy in their neurological responses. This led to the conclusion that people are inclined to dehumanize certain types of individuals and refuse to try to understand or sympathize with them. Overall, empathy is a complex emotion that can be influenced by our beliefs about the situation, our identification of one's group membership, and the emotions of disgust. Unfortunately, this can lead to the dehumanization of certain people, resulting in a lack of understanding and sympathy towards their experiences. Misguided Empathy Our empathy often blinds us to the long-term consequences of our actions. Parents spoil their children when giving in to their tears, while charitable organizations might focus on temporary fixes that leave countries dependent on foreign aid. For instance, the Make-A-Wish Foundation spends thousands on fulfilling a single child's wish, which could have been spent on saving multiple lives from malaria. In decision-making, empathy can lead us to choose irrationally and prioritize one person's pain over the greater good. Developing rational thinking is essential to make smart choices that have a lasting impact. When a child cries for a toy, a parent's empathy might compel them to give in, despite knowing that they risk spoiling the child. This demonstrates how our empathy focuses on immediate gratification, often neglecting future consequences. Similarly, some Western organizations strive to alleviate starvation, poverty, and disease but end up only providing short-term support that fosters dependency on foreign aid, derailing meaningful economic reform. For example, Various Cambodian orphanages exploit the empathy of foreign donors by pocketing the funds and expanding their exploitative facilities. Such institutions even resort to bribing parents to give up their children, subjecting them to terrible conditions and abuse. The Make-A-Wish Foundation exemplifies another instance of misplaced empathy. By spending thousands of dollars on fulfilling a five-year-old leukemia patient's wish to become a mini-Batman, the foundation could have instead saved the lives of at least three children through distributing malaria-preventing nets. Empathy can also cloud rational decision-making. Social psychologist C. Daniel Batson's study revealed how participants, when asked if a fatally ill patient should be prioritized in an emergency room, initially refused. However, when reminded of a specific suffering child, their empathy took over and led them to an irrational decision. Recognizing the influence of empathy on our decision-making process is crucial. While empathy has its merits, ensure it does not prevent smart and rational decisions that genuinely create lasting, positive change. In Against Empathy, The Case for Rational Compassion, Paul Bloom invites us to reconsider the role empathy plays in our lives. While emotional and cognitive empathy can have positive impacts on personal connections and kindness, they can also be biased and selective, potentially leading to harmful decisions. By examining the limitations of empathy and understanding the role of logic, morality, and compassion in decision-making, we can strive towards making better choices that contribute to a more just and equal society. This eye-opening exploration of empathy encourages readers to strike a balance between empathetic emotions and rational thought allowing for well-informed decisions and a deeper understanding of the world around us.